So we have the latest federal climate plan. To be clear, we have had 11 climate plans with nine sets of emissions targets from various governments since 1988. The targets, let's say it, they've never been met, never. Is this the plan that will finally succeed? Let's debate that with three members of parliament. Julie de Bruson is the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of the Environment. Carl Seaback is the environment critic for the official opposition Conservatives. And Laurel Collins is the environment critic for the NDP. Good to see you all. Thanks for being here this evening. Uh, Julie de Bruson, let me start with you. The focus of this plan is the oil and gas industry largely and the growing level of emissions from that sector. Uh, your government wants a 42% cut from 2019 emissions levels by 2030. How do you want the fossil fuel industry to reach that target? I'll, I'll, I'll take one step back and say that I think it goes beyond just the oil and gas industry. I mean, the plan is really to cover all sectors uh, within Canada, and that's what makes it a comprehensive plan. It's ambitious, but it's achievable because we are looking at all parts. So, for example, zero emission vehicles, looking at how we reduce emissions from buildings. Those are also important parts of it. But if we're talking about oil and gas, then we're working together with the industry, with stakeholders, with Indigenous peoples and with the provinces and territories to, to reach the goals that we need to, to reduce uh, emissions from oil and gas. So we've already said that we will be putting a cap on oil, the oil and gas industry. That's something that we now have you know, within this plan, kind of the parameters for that. Now we're going to be going okay. and working to get the details as to the form and nature of that cap. We also have regulations that we're doing consultations on for methane emissions to reduce methane emissions by 75 percent. We have clean fuel standards that we are putting in place. So it's really a comprehensive set of tools, All right, it's let, not just one. Let me move to Mr. Seaback. And uh, to be fair, there's talk in this plan, Mr. Seaback, about a, uh, consultations and negotiations before there is a cap. But at least now there's a target for the oil and gas industry. Uh, you warned today that uh, you think this plan will have catastrophic effects on the Canadian economy. Why? Well, I, you know, for, I, I just just to start first, um, that was not a plan. What we just heard, there is a there, there's a plan to reduce emissions. That's fine, um, like forty two percent, but no actual breakdown on how they're going to do that and what the effects of that are going to be. And so, just for example, the thirty percent reduction in fertilizer that they're mandating as part of this program, that has been estimated by uh, in a report to cost between now and 2030, when the full reduction takes place, $48 billion to the Canadian agricultural sector, and then $10 billion a year after that. What will the effect of that have on the price of food? We're already in an affordability crisis. What effect will that have on jobs within the agriculture sector? These are the kinds of things that this plan omits or actually doesn't consider. Hmm. And we saw that with the carbon tax, the PBO said, when you look at the effects of the carbon tax across the economy, it's a net negative for most Canadians. And if they didn't look at the carbon tax and the effects on the economy, I have no faith that they did that across all these okay. other sectors uh, in the economy. We'll pick up on some of that as we continue our conversation. Laurel Collins, New Democrats say this climate plan uh, does not respond to the urgency of the crisis. Why not? Well, we are in a climate emergency. We're seeing extreme weather, flooding, climate fires, heat waves, and today's emissions reduction plan is far from what's needed, both in terms of addressing the climate crisis, reducing emissions, it, you know, only aims at the low end of the Liberals' uh, targets, 40%, when the IPCC report, top world scientists are saying, we need to go much further. We need to at least cut our emissions in half. But also, it doesn't do enough when it comes to protecting workers who are going to be impacted by this transition. And the Liberals have been heading in the wrong direction for six years. Emissions have been increasing. They continue to hand out billions of dollars to big profitable oil and gas companies instead of investing in the climate solutions we know are needed. Okay, let, let me pick up on that. Julie DeBruyssen, uh, this plan uh, relies on the success uh, in many ways of carbon capture technology and incentives to expand that technology uh, again in the oil and gas sector. Uh, your government still provides subsidies to the fossil fuel industry. Why are any more incentives needed to help the industry reduce emissions when it's enjoying record cash flow and could finance itself? Well, Again, so the first part about that with carbon capture is that it's one of the tools. And, and I'll go back to the fact that there are many other tools that are set out, many of which are already in the works and that have been happening, been put in place, such as regulations on methane emissions, 
such as clean fuel standards and other pieces like that. And we're working towards the cap on um, the oil and gas industry. So is that first piece that's important. But on the next piece, we also have committed to removing uh, fossil fuel subsidies two years earlier than previously planned. We, we are now saying 2023. Originally, it was 2025. Hmm. So we are actually working towards that end. But it is one of the tools. Carbon capture using storage is one of the tools. And to be clear, in the plan, we say specifically it applies not just oil and gas. We're talking about using it for cement, for steel, for other industries that are also going to be able to use it. Sure. And it cannot be used mm. for the production of more oil. Okay, Mr. Seabach, uh, what responsibility, you know, the Prime Minister suggested today that, you know, as oil prices are up and Canadians know the effect, or sorry, gas prices are, are up, Canadians know the effect of that, that the oil and gas sector is uh, enjoying a, a major windfall uh, in cash flow these days. Uh, what responsibility do you think the oil and gas sector has to accelerate emissions reductions and to invest more of its own mon money in caption, uh, carbon capture technology, for instance, to make that happen? Uh, look, I think they do have to make those invest investments, and they're willing to do that. The oil and gas industry has been clear. Uh, they want to move towards reducing, significantly reducing their carbon emissions. Where we don't see, again, is what the plan is to help them do that. Whether they're making money or not, we're talking about a 42% reduction from 2019 levels. So that's a huge reduction in a very short period of time. We're talking about, you know, seven and a half years. So where's the government investment as, as partners in that? And that goes across all sectors. Uh, you know, you can look at their zero emission vehicle standards. Uh, there's, there's an RBC report out that says it's going to cost $5.4 billion a year uh, just to try and get the electricity grid to net zero. And the cost of build out for zero emission vehicles uh, across the country, especially in rural areas, is $25 billion a year. Where is the plan for that? That's the problem with what the Liberal government puts out. Lots of talk, no actual hard plan. Uh, Laurel Collins, what, what's your view on the reliance of this plan on, uh, or, or the emphasis in many ways of this plan on carbon capture, capture technology and who should pay for that? Well, carbon capture and storage and you know, really concerningly, the utilization part of this, uh, it's a technology that's been denounced by many leading Canadian climate scientists as risky, unproven, uh, that it also has the potential to increase production in oil and gas. You know, the Liberals are betting uh, the planet, our, our future, on a highly questionable proposition. Uh, and, you know, we do not need to be handing out more money to the oil and gas sector. They continue to increase handouts, subsidies to oil and gas, even though each year they promise that they're going to reduce them. You know, Canadians don't trust them anymore. We have the worst record of the G7 on reducing emissions. We've missed every single climate target. We need a government who's going to take the climate crisis seriously, who's going to invest in renewables, in a just transition for workers, in the climate solutions we okay. know are needed right now. Let's talk about the, the in the time we have left here. Uh, Julia De Bruce in the plan released today, uh, it makes reference to the to the the need to deal with communities and transition, but doesn't have a plan for that yet, as promised by the government. Um, when will we see that transition plan? So it does, though. I, creating a strong economy that is based on taking into account climate change and fighting climate change is really at the center of this entire plan. So, for example, when we talk about, you know, moving towards zero emission vehicles, just last week in Windsor, we saw the largest investment ever in, in, in the automobile industry here in Canada uh, with the creation of a plant specifically to create those batteries. It's got batteries for vehicles. It was Stellantis and LG that invested in that. And when we look at that, it'll create 2,500 jobs, good paying jobs in Windsor with the potential for many spin off jobs. Right, as but, well. uh, but a lot so, of people look at that and say those, those are events along the way, but that's not a plan. I mean, in, in terms of you know, scoping out for people who, who, for instance, work in the fossil fuel industry today who want to know what am I going to be doing five years from now? What, what can you tell them? And, well, they're at the center of, of the. the the plan and what the work that we have to do as far as just transition we have a commitment to put in place just transition legislation the minister of natural um, resources has been talking with workers and and as well the minister of labor 
to actually come up with a plan that takes into account the, the needs of communities and how they can take a, a role in getting these jobs that are going to be the sustainable jobs of the right. future. Ms. That's Ms. where Mr. the Seabag, economy is going. Mr. Seabag, let me hear you on that, on, on the need for a transition plan and where it is. Well, how do you announce a plan with significant reductions like this without having done your homework on all of these issues? whether it's the build out for uh, you know, zero emission vehicles across Canada, whether it's the cost of getting the uh, electric grid across Canada to net zero, or the transition of, of jobs if they kill the oil sector, which they are seriously trying to do. How do you actually come to Canadians without a credible plan on any of these things? And what the cost of these things are going to be? I, I, you know, to me, I'm, I'm speechless. And, and, and the one thing I'll agree on with Laurel is they've never met a target yet, and I doubt they'll meet a single target in this plan. Yeah, well, well, no government, as I've said, no governments have since 1988. Uh, Laurel Collins, uh, I'll give a final word to you on the, on the, on the transition piece. And uh, should it have been in this plan today? You know, it should have been in plans. You know, the Liberals have been in power for six years. And instead of investing in helping communities, helping workers meet the challenges created by the climate crisis, created by this transition. Instead, they've spent billions uh, handing out money to oil and gas companies. They've spent 14 times more in subsidies to the fossil fuel industry than they have to renewables. You know, the upcoming budget is an important opportunity for the government to actually show that it takes the climate emergency seriously. Instead of you know, there are over 6,000 backroom meetings okay. with the oil and gas sector. They should sit down with workers and they should invest in the green energy economy. All right. We'll see how much more of this is sketched out in the budget uh, Thursday, April 7th. Uh, Canadians will see that and you watch it all unfold here on CPAC, of course. Uh, thank you all for your time tonight. Good to talk to you and uh, take care.